All right, well now it's 406, so I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and get started. Um, again, thank you all for participating in our uh, virtual icebreaker. And if you haven't already, and you're just joining right now, um, take a look in the chat box and uh, we do have some questions that we would love to have you answer so you can, we can know more about you and who are, who are some of our attendees. And it kind of goes along with the theme of what we're talking about today, networking, right? Getting to know each other, getting to know each other's business, organizations, whatever it may be. So again, welcome everybody to our Cielo workshop series. Uh, my name is, is Alex Alvarez. I'm a program manager with Cielo and I'm gonna be um, your host this afternoon, a facilitator. So very excited for this workshop here. And um, before we get started, I know we have a lot of uh, uh, new faces, a lot of familiar faces, but for those of you who are new and unfamiliar with Cielo and who we are, um, I wanna go ahead and give you a quick introduction. So Cielo, we stand for the Community for Innovation, Entrepreneurship, Leadership and Opportunities. Who we are and what we do. Um, we officially launched in 2015. We've been helping clients since 2012. We're a nonprofit organization helping aspiring entrepreneurs become business owners. One nice thing about our organization and everything we do is um, we are available at no cost to our clients. So all of our services um, are at no, at no charge. We help you build and develop onto the entrepreneur mindset needed to help you achieve success. And our goal really is to provide the resources and guidance to help you get, get you there. And our clients in return will provide the hard work and the passion. So in terms of the services that we offer at Cielo, we do offer small business development training for all, all of you who are looking to um, start a business or have a business or in business right now and could use some more development, we do offer that. We have a monthly workshop series, which all of you are a part of right now. Um, we do have different topics and different uh, guest speakers um, that do uh, participate in these. We also offer one-on-one -on -one small business coaching. We have a micro grant program for Cielo business startups um, that are for right now, are, it's available for Cielo clients. And we also look to connect you to small business resources and services, which is a big part of what we do here at, um, at Cielo. So some upcoming events, just to let you know, um, it's fast approaching, but our Cielo Small Business Startup Program, which is part of our Small Business Development Program, will be starting March 8th um, in, the, what was that, in two weeks um, at 4 p.m. I know a lot of our attendees today have actually participated in these programs in the past. So essentially take a journey on the Entrepreneur Roadmap to Business launch. This is a six week program for entrepreneurs and startups. So businesses that have been um, for in, either in development up until three years or more in business, right? Um, includes a live classroom training and one-on-one -on -one business coaching. Topics include how to pick a business name, advertising on social media, introduction to business financials and much, much more. If you're interested in knowing more about it or in registering, feel free to, to follow this uh, QR code on the flyer here, or you can email us at info at clocommunity.org. All right, that brings us to our guest speaker today. So as I mentioned, this is something that we do talk about a lot um, when we're talking with clients as to how can we build our connections? How can we build our resources? And how can we make um, better business for ourselves, right, as entrepreneurs? So I'm very excited to have Charity Farrell here from, uh, from SoCal BNI. Um, Charity Farrell became an entrepreneur when she started her business 11 years ago after spending more than 20 years in marketing, advertising, and event planning. Her business only grows through referrals and word of mouth. So she became a networking member of BNI seven years ago to help grow her business. Charity today will be sharing the things she wished she knew about networking when her business started and how networking for small business owners is critical to long-term business success. So with that said, welcome to our guest speaker, Charity Farrell. All right, thank you, Alex, so much for that introduction. Let me just get uh, the sharing. Can you guys all see my screen okay? You good? All right. And I don't know if you guys have ever done 
uh, webinars or shared your screen, sometimes when you share your screen, everything else disappears for just a moment. So I had to get it all back and now I'm ready. But thank you again, Alex, for the introduction. I am so excited to be with you here all today. I, I uh, did start my own business 11 years ago, and I know that there are so many things that need to be done in order to just even open your doors in the first place. And then once they're open, you're wondering how the heck am I going to find these customers? And my first few years in business were the hardest for me because I was trying to do it all on my own. And I wish that I went, when I was first starting out, that someone had told me that networking needed to be a key part of my marketing strategy, especially because of the industry that I'm in, which is credit card processing. Unfortunately, the industry itself does not have a great reputation because so many processors have taken advantage of small business owners, charging them way too much money and not providing good service and not taking care of them when they needed help. This reputation added to the difficulty that I was having when I first started my business. So the things that I want to share with you today are things I wish I would have known and done right from the start. My business growth would have been completely different if I had included networking and word of mouth marketing in my business plan. Now, word of mouth marketing and getting business through referrals is the most effective marketing strategy to grow your business. Why? because of one word, trust. According to a Nielsen Global Survey, 85% of consumers said that they trust the recommendations of friends and family and colleagues over all other forms of advertising. And when people give positive feedback about a product or service, it becomes more trustworthy. People are faced with an overwhelming amount of ads every day. It seems like everywhere we look, there's an ad right there in front of us. We're bombarded with them in our browsers, the apps on our phone, our email, social media, and billboards. And people want to buy from, you know, trusted companies, but ads don't necessarily build trust. They start by building awareness. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't advertise. I'm suggesting that ads not be your only attempt to gain customers especially when the Nielsen survey results that I just shared with you show that the most credible source of advertising comes from people that consumers know and trust. So here's what a typical buying process might look like. The consumer is looking to buy a product or service, so they begin researching and they're quickly inundated with different ads, maybe even yours. And faced with information overload, the consumer, the consumer might become overwhelmed. So they start talking to people they know, asking questions, saying, do you know someone that, and then their friend or colleague shares a positive experience about your business. That consumer trusts this person. They now feel more confident in making a decision after hearing that positive re review from someone that they trust. And then they call you to buy your product or book your service. And these recommendations and reviews are from people to that the consumer trusts and it helps them to feel comfortable about making a buying decision. And when that consumer feels comfortable, they're more likely to buy. In business, comfort is equal to trust. And we know that trust sells. The word of mouth referrals cuts through the information overload and helps potential customers make buying decisions. And the amazing thing about referrals is that it doesn't stop after a single interaction between the people that we trust. Once someone spreads information to a new person, then that person will tell someone else and on and on and on. Referrals are one of the most effective ways to increase your sales and grow your business. It's a cost effective strategy to establish your company as trustworthy and reliable within your community. And as I said a moment ago, it is ultimately because of trust that people are going to buy into your product or service. So now you're wondering, well, how do I do it? How do I get people to start talking about my business and referring to me? And the answer is face-to-face -face networking. And when I say face-to-face, -face, I'm referring to both in-person and virtual networking. According to a survey completed by HubSpot, 95% of professionals say face-to-face -face networking is essential to building long-term business relationships. 
we all know so much has changed in the last two years with the way that people are doing business and the way that they're networking. Many of the opportunities to network in person completely stopped in 2020, and they haven't started again. But new opportunities to network virtually have been created and made it possible for many business owners to not only stay in business during the pandemic, but grow their business and even thrive during the pandemic. Face-to-face -face networking provides an opportunity to get to know and build relationships with other business owners and entrepreneurs. And it's so beneficial because it allows you to tap into the relationships that the other business owners have and leverage their trust in those relationships. And remember, I've said it a couple of times, trust is a vital part of receiving referrals. So we're gonna spend some time talking about where we can go to meet other business owners and entrepreneurs, and then how to build their trust and relationships uh, with these people in order to earn their referrals. There are many places that offer networking opportunities, but not all networking opportunities are created equal. Some are definitely more social and focused on the opportunity to sell to each other. But what I found is that the most productive groups have very specific goals and processes to help each other grow their businesses. So we have in our area, the Anaheim Orange County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Even if you don't own a business that serves tourists, you could still join and make local business connections. They host a couple of events each year for businesses to get together and participate in some networking. The challenge here is that people aren't meeting frequently or consistently. So building relationships and getting to know people enough to trust each other might be a little difficult. There's also the Rotary or Kiwanis. Now, both of these are service organizations, but many of the members are business owners as well. So there is an opportunity to get to know them and build relationships. However, the main focus of both of these organizations is servicing the community, not networking. And we also have our local chamber of commerce. You may have even joined your city's chamber when you started your business. But did you know that many of them also have networking opportunities as well? I joined my local chamber because I live and work in this city. And about four years after I started my business, I attended weekly meetings that they called leads lunches. My experience though in chamber networking is that it's definitely more social like developing a friend group and, and selling to each other rather than really being focused on referrals to other people. And that's been my personal experience. The Visitors Bureau, Rotary and Kiwanis and the local chambers all allow multiple of the same types of businesses to join and be part of their networking. So let's say that you're a caterer. That means that there could be several other caterers networking with you, with everyone else. Now, another networking option is BNI. And I know Alex has encouraged you guys to visit, and several of us from BNI are here today to network with you. But it's Business Networking International. BNI has chapters all over the world. And in Orange County and the Long Beach South Bay areas, there are 58 different chapters with many business owners and entrepreneurs as members in each group. Every chapter meets weekly in order to network learn more about each other's businesses, build trust and relationships with each other, and ultimately send referrals to each other. BNI also has chapters that network either in person or virtually. Both options are available based on whatever someone's interest is or what their schedule or their comfort level is. Every single one of these groups that I just reviewed has a monetary cost to participate or become a member. And every single group would also require a commitment of time from you in, in order to participate. So when considering where to spend your time, our precious time, you also need to consider what is going to be the most efficient and productive use of your time. Where are you going to get the best results? And when I first started networking, I got involved in my chamber, like I said, and I also visited nearly all of the groups that I just mentioned, and even a few that I haven't. I found that the most productive group for me has been BNI. And I want to share with you some of the reasons why I felt that it worked for me and, and uh, just from my personal experience. So the chapters only allow one person in each profession to become a member. So the caterer example that I used a minute ago, there would only be one caterer allowed to be a member in, in the chapter. So for me, that meant that there weren't any other merchant service providers in the group. Without other people doing the same thing as me, 
all of the members were able to get to know me and what makes me different without having to compete with anyone else. Members also make that weekly commitment to meet with each other. This allows us to get to know each other really well, to build that trust and credibility and learn how to promote each other's products and services, how to become a word of mouth referral giver for the members in our chapter. The members are able to learn how I am different than the many other providers in my industry. And that's a big deal because like I said a little while ago, my industry doesn't have a great reputation. So the members are able to get to know me, see that I'm different and become my advocates when they're promoting me to potential referrals. Because BNI is all over the world, I am able to get to know, network and receive, uh, receive referrals from uh, all of the other members in our region. I'm also able to connect with the members across our country and even the world. It has given me access and exposure to so many more people than just the members of my group. Something I really like is that the philosophy of BNI is giver's gain. You can call it karma or what goes around comes around, but basically it means that when we give to others, they wanna to give to us as well. Each member is looking out for each other sharing testimonials and referrals and helping each other grow their businesses. It's small businesses helping other small businesses. And as a solopreneur, I found this to be extremely empowering. Like I wasn't alone in building my business. Members do not sell to each other. We focus on selling through each other by leveraging the many relationships that each of us has. We will naturally do business with other members, but that isn't our goal. Our goal is to get to know each other so that we can become familiar with who you are, what you do, and what sets you apart from other businesses doing the same thing as you. We become word of mouth referral givers for each other, looking for opportunities to talk about other members and share our recommendations with the people that trust us. And all of these things have helped me to grow my business in ways that I just was not able to do on my own. So I encourage you to visit the places I mentioned, check out your chamber, uh, come visit some BNI chapters, see what you like about them. Did you feel comfortable? Did you feel welcomed? And the people were interested in learning about you. You have to find the group that works for you and one that is focused on helping you to grow your business through referrals. In addition, uh, when considering joining a networking group, no matter what it is, oftentimes only the cost is factored into the decision. And I don't just mean the monetary cost to join. I also mean the time that's required. And so often busy entrepreneurs and business owners think networking costs too much money or it costs too much time. And as a result, many unfortunately choose not to get involved in networking or they only network sporadically. And the problem with that is that when you aren't consistently networking with other professionals, you are not able to build those relationships and get to the point where they trust you. And since we know that trust is the reason that people refer to you, you're gonna miss out on any possibility of being referred to consistently. You gotta think about it like joining a gym. Maybe you're joining because you wanna lose weight or get stronger, or you want to be healthier overall, but you can't join a gym and just have all those things magically happen. You have to show up and spend time each week working toward those things. You have to make a commitment to the process, right? Well, effective networking is exactly the same, but when the effort is made, the results are amazing. And that's why face-to-face -face networking with other business owners and entrepreneurs should be an important part of being a successful small business owner. So yes, there is time and money involved in networking, but what will it cost you not to do it? Will your business growth be slower at the beginning like it was for me? Will it be harder to get the word out about your business? Will it be harder to get new customers? I would have absolutely started networking sooner if I knew what it would mean for me and that it would absolutely change my business. So now you're, you're saying, Charity, I'm convinced, right? You've made a decision to join a networking group, but before you can start networking, you need to get prepared. And the first thing that you can do to get prepared to network is make sure that you have some business cards, both printed and digital options. It's a good idea to have these with you all the time because you just never know when you're gonna be able to talk to somebody about what you do. If you don't have printed business cards, you can easily make one using canva.com. Most of their design elements are free and they have lots of templates to get you started and it's really easy to use. 
then you can get them printed with a local business owner you know, another small business, or through a service like vistaprint.com. Now, be sure to search online for coupon codes if you do use Vistaprint because they always have tons of them available. You can also create a digital business card to store on your cell phone, and that you, you could share wherever you are. There are free and paid options for creating digital business cards. And you can see on the slide right now that this is a sample of my digital card, and I made it using hihello.me. It's right there on your screen. When you get uh, when you're creating your your business card you get a qr code so i want everybody to take out your phone and i want you to open up your camera and point it over the qr code and you're going to see what happens when you would share your digital business card with someone else so i'm going to give you a minute to do that oh and plump queen even sells digital business cards you guys gotta hook up if you don't have a digital business card, you need to you need to connect for sure. So now that you've done that, it's great to have digital business cards because they are so easy to share with others and they are really super simple to set up as well. And now we know that we all have the hookup with Plump, Plump Queen. So there's no reason not to create a digital business card. And if you have any trouble creating yours, I'm happy to help as well. Uh, you could shoot me an email or give me a call and I'd be happy to walk you through the setup. But it sounds like we have an expert in the room. So defer to her first, all right? So the next thing that you need to do to be ready to network is to know what you're going to say. You may have heard these terms, elevator pitch, 30 second commercial or a profitable introduction. But no matter what you call it, it's all the same thing. It's your opportunity to quickly share about who you are and what you do with a potential customer or referral partner. It's basically a short description of what you do, who you work with, and the value that you offer to your customer uh, and your clients. The goal is to be able to, to, to deliver your introduction in 60 seconds or less and in a conversational way. I'm going to drop a document into the chat right now that includes uh, information on what we're going to talk about next, and that is the five key ingredients for a great introduction. You can download this uh, right now or later and, and review when we're done. And for the next part, I want you to grab a piece of paper and start walking through this with me. And uh, for whatever reason, the the attachments are turned off. So I will actually email these to Alex. And when he does a follow up with everybody, he'll include the attachments in the email for you. All right. So the first thing that we need to talk about is who are you? I want you to, uh, if you haven't already, grabbed a piece of paper, start walking this through with me. Uh, and I want you to write one sentence about yourself. So for example, I might say that I help businesses accept credit card payments, right? Simple, basic sentence. So take a moment to write something down about you. All right, the next thing is what do you do? You wanna choose one or two products or services and write a sentence or two about them. These are the things that you do every day in your business. Now, when you're writing this down, don't worry about getting things perfect or the sentences you know, just flowing. Uh, you're gonna fine tune it later. Right now, we're just brainstorming. The next thing is that we are gonna write down the problem that we solve. So you need to identify the value that you offer to your customers and clients. How are you helping people? Now avoid listing a whole bunch of features and instead focus on how a customer benefits from working with you. And I want you to just write down the first couple of things that come to mind. All right, the next thing is how are you different? What sets you apart from every other business owner who does what you do? Why would someone choose to work with you? 
I recommend not saying customer service uh, because every single one of your competitors are going to say that they have great customer service, whether or not they actually do. It's, it's a very broad statement. So an example of this for me would be instead of saying, I offer excellent customer service, I would say, my clients are able to contact me anytime they need assistance. They can email me, call me, or text me, and I am available for them. That's an example of customer service. So I want you to think of things other than the blanket statement of great customer service. Then we are gonna give a call to action. You're gonna close your introduction, leading your listener to do something. Maybe it's to exchange business cards or how they could learn more. You wanna provide a way for further contact or, or maybe even try scheduling a meeting. And you can work on that part. That's really simple uh, after we're done today. Now, an optional thing for you to include in your introduction is a hook or a question, something to grab someone's attention. So I might say, did you know that 80% of customers prefer to pay for their purchases using a credit card? If a business isn't able to accept credit card payments, they risk losing a lot of customers, right? It's that, did you know? A hook or adding a question doesn't always work for every industry. So don't feel like you have to do it. Just know that it's an option available to you. Now, if you haven't written something down for each of the five steps, that is okay. You can continue working on it after we're done today. Like I said, Alex is going to email you guys a follow-up and it'll include those attachments. And it's going to outline those five steps that I just reviewed with you. And then after you get things you know, written down, uh, I want you to be begin creating a 30 second and maybe even a 60 second introduction. Work on it until it flows naturally and, and it shares the most important information. So we've talked about the types of information that our short introduction should include. Now let's review a few additional tips on how to make sure that you're creating an introduction that will leave people wanting to know more, because that is the goal. You wanna keep it short. You have a very limited amount of time to make a first impression. So make every word count. 30 seconds, uh, that's about 90 words and 60 seconds are about 180 words. So don't say too much. You just got a little, a little bit of time, right? You also want to know your audience. Depending on who you're sharing your introduction to, knowing your audience can make an even greater impact. If you're speaking to a room of business owners that could refer you to the people that they know, sharing a general introduction is perfect. So if it were me, when someone asked me what my business was in Instead of saying, oh, I, I own a merchant services company, I would instead say, I make sure businesses aren't overpaying for their credit card processing by teaching them what they are paying and why, right? It's the same thing, but said totally different. And any business owner that felt like they were paying too much would probably want to talk more to me, right? Now, if you're talking to a potential customer, you could tailor your introduction to potentially meet the needs that they have. So whenever you're talking to a potential customer, you wanna ask them questions, get them talking, listen intently and engage with them. If you hear them share a problem that they're having and you know you can solve it, work that into your introduction. The more that you can speak to your potential customer's needs, the greater chance that you'll have in getting to talk to them more and even earning their business. So less is more. Like I said, we have, you know, we got to keep it short. We only have a moment to, to get someone's attention. And there is a natural tendency for us to want to say everything about our businesses. But when you start going on and on and on, you risk losing the interest of the people that you're talking to. You want to share just enough to be effective and then get them asking questions, talking more about the benefits of working with you rather than the laundry list of features of your product or service. Always create an opportunity for follow-up. You can create a call to action for your potential customer to take the next step, like handing them your card uh, or encouraging them to visit your website or scheduling a time to talk again or sending an email with samples of your work. Unfortunately, unless we follow up after our initial conversation, it is very unlikely that anything will happen next. And finally, you need to practice, practice, practice. Don't just write your introduction. 
You need to say it out loud and practice it multiple times. Memorize it. You're not going to have your notes with you wherever you go. You want to say your introduction so many times that it, it becomes natural for you. It just rolls off of your tongue. And when you get comfortable sharing about what you do, the passion that you have for your business really begins to shine through. And once you've completed your introduction and you have a way to share your contact information, you got to get in the right mindset. Remember that we aren't going to network in order to sell to all the people that we meet. We're going to get to know other business professionals and entrepreneurs. Our goal is to begin building relationships and earning trust. So be ready to ask some questions about the people that you meet. What do they do? How'd they get started in their business? Who is their typical customer? There are so many questions that you can ask to get someone talking. I have lots of examples on the screen. You're welcome to take a screenshot. I also have a file that I'm gonna share with Alex to send to you guys after we're done today. It has uh, lots more questions uh, on that sheet, including these. Now, good questions are extremely important. We ask them for more than just a way to get information. It's how we can engage and connect with the people in a more meaningful way. And this is going to set you apart from most of the other people because it's so rare that questions like these are asked. Questions show that we are interested in someone else, who they are, what matters to them, and what is happening in their business. You'll be able to gather information that will help you develop your relationship further, build that trust, and create more opportunities to do business. And when we show interest in someone and ask them meaningful questions, you can usually count on them asking you the same questions right back. I want to caution you of something. Never assume that someone that you're talking to won't be a good connection for you based on what their business is. Maybe you're a caterer and you just met someone that is a graphic designer. You might think that they won't be able to send you referrals because you're in such different industries. So it would you know, maybe be a waste of your time to talk to them, but don't do that. You never know who someone else knows. Maybe that graphic designer works with companies that host events and they need catering. If you don't take the time to talk to someone and get to know them, you could miss out on some amazing opportunities. Doing the things that I just reviewed can make networking feel a lot more comfortable. Maybe you are super extroverted and think that you are confident to go network. Don't skip these steps. You want your networking time to be purposeful and effective. Maybe you're an introvert like me, and the thought of talking to a whole bunch of people that you don't know is a little scary. Preparing to network and practicing what you'd like to say about your business will be extremely helpful for you. Now, when you go to network, wherever you go, be networking. Instead of talking about the weather, or the Super Bowl halftime show, focus on business. Find people you don't know and ask lots of questions. When you ask them about their business and show genuine interest, they're going to do the same for you. And then you'll get to talk about who you are and what you do. Whether you are in your comfort zone or not, you have got to engage with people in order to begin building those relationships and earning their trust. And whenever you meet someone new, ask for their business card or a way to connect with them later. Then send them an email, letting them know that you enjoyed talking with them. Hey, thanks, Alex. It was so nice talking with you. Send any materials that you promised and ask for an opportunity to talk again. Following up with the people that you meet is an often forgotten part of networking. But remember that networking is all about building relationships with other people getting to know each other and building that trust so that if there is an opportunity to refer to each other in the future, we've already earned the referral because of the relationship that we've built. Networking does not have to be hard or scary. It just requires a time commitment from you. But when you make that commitment, it ends up being an investment in your business. And when you invest the time to build long-term relationships with other business professionals, the results are far reaching and long lasting. And for me as a solopreneur, it has been amazing to be surrounded by other professionals that are working to achieve their goals as well. 
I encourage you to seek out networking opportunities and push yourself to begin building relationships with other professionals in your community. I would love for you to visit one of our 58 BNI chapters in Orange County and the Long Beach areas. There are chapters that meet nearly every day of the work week, and SoCal BNI even has the first Spanish speaking chapter in the United States. If you are interested in visiting, I want you to please email Jamie Nearing. She is our chapter placement specialist. So her email address is right there on the screen. Uh, Jamie is here with us today. I want you to unmute really quick, Jamie, and say hello to everybody. Hi, everyone. All right, you can all see her, right? Now you know who you'll be talking to if you send Jamie an email. Now, Alex or Christine, is there anything that you wanna add or are we ready to open up for some questions? I'll add real quick that, um, well, first of all, Charity, thank you so much for this. Mm -hmm. This was very informative and it's something that we do talk about a lot um, with clients. And I would say that, um, especially for entrepreneurs and people within the first um, from startup to first three years, getting clients is, is um, a challenge. So thank you so much for shedding light on this and, and, um, and, and informing people about this as well too. And for those of you who don't know, I, I used to be in BNI myself um, like 10 years ago. <laughs> so you've all probably heard me talk about it at some point. And um, I really do think this is something that's worth looking into, um, especially when you're looking to think outside the box. So um, again, thank you for that. Um, My pleasure. Christina, I don't know if you had anything to add if, um, if not, we'll open up for questions. I just want to say thank you to Charity and, and Jamie for connecting us all to get to this point. Um, great resources. I love the prompting questions. Um, and I just wanted to share, introverts can sometimes be some of the best networkers because they listen so well. So me. <laughs> so high yeah. five to the intro. Yeah, we're high fiving right now. <laughs> me too. All right, with that, um, I'd like to open up for some questions uh, for charity. So if anybody have any questions, feel free to meet yourself and ask, or you can drop it in the chat as well, too. Maybe there aren't any. I don't see any in the chat. I do have one question for you, and okay. you might have... Um, you might have talked about it a little bit, but I know we have some people here that are not from the local area. Mm -hmm. So um, can you speak a little bit more as to the different locations or mm -hmm. how vast the BNI network is? Well, like I mentioned, if, if it's BNI that they're looking for, it's there's chapters all over the country. So I would still recommend uh, reaching out to Jamie at that email address that she put into chat because she can connect people uh, to the local uh, regions in the areas that aren't Orange County or the Long Beach South Bay area. She can be a resource for that. Good to know. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a question actually from Linda. Okay. So how do you show that you are generally interested in their business, but still be able to sell your business mm -hmm. too? Well, the key is to stop trying to sell your business when you're networking and instead just talk about what you love about your business. When you're showing interest in who they are and what they do, like when have you ever asked somebody like even the simple thing like, oh, how are you doing today? I'm great. What do they say next? How are you? It's a natural tendency that when we're asked a question and we answer it, we ask those, we ask that question in turn. So what it's going to allow you to do is talk about who you are. The question that you want to answer, you could ask of someone else. And when you get that dialogue going, um, if people are interested, they're gonna tell you that they're interested. Otherwise, you're just building that opportunity to, uh, or build the opportunity for the relationship and also start earning the trust with each other. Uh, like I said, in networking, people will naturally do business with each other. It's because we learn about each other's businesses and we realize, hey, I need to work with you. But if we're going in with the mindset of, of selling, we, we're probably going to be really disappointed when we're done networking because we weren't really networking. We weren't building the relationships. We weren't making those connections. So I hope, I, I hope that answers the question. We have, it's a mindset shift for sure. You've got to change the way you're thinking about it. 
I agree. And uh, yeah, no, that, that's a great answer. And I, I think one thing that I would say when we're working with clients, sometimes clients um, that we're working with, they, when they think about networking, they think about, you know, this is a potential client and which could very well be, but a lot of times we got to think kind of bigger picture. Um, mm -hmm. Who do these people know and how can mm -hmm. they connect with me? So um, I, I saw like, on her second part of her question that she said she gets uh, nervous or uh, like, shy about talking about her business or his or her business. Um, that was the same for me when I started as well. I would get so nervous that when I was talking to people, I was, I was trembling. Um, and because I don't want to talk about myself, I don't want to tell people that I'm, you know, I'm so awesome. It, it made me uh, nervous and uncomfortable, but, um, everybody's there to do the same exact thing. They, they, they genuinely want to learn about you. And I did get more comfortable in those situations. Um, the more I did it, uh, it's not going to feel, you know, like warm and cozy and safe the very first time, no matter how welcoming the group is, you might feel, you might feel a little anxious and nervous. That is, that's only going to go away, uh, with frequency. And I wish I had a better answer than that but that is the truth. And so don't let that be your obstacle because if I had allowed my trembling and anxiety and uh, nervousness stop me from networking, I would have missed out on seven years of amazing networking and growth in my business. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And I'm, I relate, I'm a total introvert okay. myself. So <laughs> we did have another question too. Um, okay. How do you measure progress or success with networking? I would say by the relationships that you're building, um, you, you have to kind of envision it like uh, building a friendship or building, uh, like if you're dating somebody, the connection doesn't happen instantly. It takes time. You have to invest in, in the relationship building. That is why uh, meeting frequently with your potential referral partners is so key because it just doesn't happen instantly, right? Um, and so I would measure the success is not by, an, in the beginning, by getting a ton of referrals, because again, we have to earn those referrals through the trust that we're building, those relationships that we're building, right? It would be, who am I connecting with? Who am I, who am I connecting with outside of the networking meetings, whatever they are? Who's, who's responding to the email follow-up that I sent? where am I, where am I going in the relationship? Is it, is it growing? And that's how I would measure um, my success in the beginning is like, who am I starting to, to add to my, my group? The referrals will come like that'll happen, but they won't necessarily happen right away. It, it takes time because people have to trust you before they send referrals to you of, you know, their clients and friends and family. All right, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I have a question actually from one of our clients, uh, Leonel. He asked, okay. um, what's the best way to imprint your brand on a potential buyer? So I think um, it takes people multiple times uh, to see or hear about you before they'll take action on, on something. So you want to be repetitive. That is why consistently meeting with your partners is so key. It's repetitive, right? And in advertising, um, well, I spent over 20 years in marketing and advertising. So uh, what we told people was people have to see your ad, your, you know, whatever it is, five to seven times before they take action. So I would make sure that you're in all the right places. Make sure you have your social media squared away. It's where a lot of people are looking for businesses. Um, you have a website, even if it's not super detailed, have a website that people can go to. It creates some validity. And then also uh, make sure you've got your business card that's showing your brand, your you know who you are. And so that consistent message along with the networking, uh, building those relationships, uh, it's, it all blends together. Um, you certainly could have networking without the advertising, but it, I, I truly believe that it lends credibility to our businesses when we're, when we're on social media, when we've got a website, those types of things. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? I saw a lot of comments in there. Yeah, a lot of people um, giving 
tips and, yep. and sharing um, their experiences too, which is great. So awesome. Um, but yeah, can, in terms of question, that's question. Sure. Oh, sorry, Alex. No, go ahead. <laughs> I was curious. So I know virtual, um, we're all still in this virtual networking world, but um, there is more, you know, in-person events mm -hmm. uh, coming out uh, with chambers and all these groups. I'm just curious, like as an introvert myself, sometimes mm -hmm. um, when I see a group of people, like they're already chatting, mm -hmm. um, sometimes I don't always know how to mm -hmm. interrupt or interject myself because I really want to talk mm -hmm. with them. Do you have any tips oh, yeah. on, on that? <laughs> well, I can so relate to that. Um, and this is probably why, I mean, there are lots of reasons why I have felt BNI was home for me. Uh, BNI teaches members that you don't ever see somebody by themselves. Like you go and talk to them. Um, we include everyone. Uh, you know, it's the open circle conversations and making sure that everybody is connecting with each other. And that, that doesn't happen everywhere. So it made those other events for me really hard. And, um, and I wandered around many times feeling very awkward and um, like, what do I do? I don't know what to do with myself. And uh, what I would typically do in that situation is find someone else that was also not talking with somebody rather than interjecting myself into, um, you know, a group conversation. Cause that felt less awkward to me. At least they were just by themselves. So I think once you can attach yourself to at least one person in the room, you could breathe a, a little bit because at the very least, uh, maybe that conversation ends, but they introduce you to someone else. Um, so that was my, that was what I, what I did is I would usually find someone else that was by themselves and talk with them um, because that felt a little less invasive to me, even though everybody's there to do the same thing. But um, I felt really awkward interrupting like three or four people talking with each other. I'm really glad you addressed that because story of my life, I used to have that problem all the time. How do I, how do I get myself to talk to someone without just completely <laughs> right. taking over the conversation or just walking in between it? So, I'm so it glad is you not easy. That. It's not easy. And some people are so naturally at it. They just like, they could talk to anybody anywhere. And, and I feel like I can talk to most like people. It's just like, how do I get in there to get started? And, and like, let me in. You know, it's like, I'm such a dork. I'm like, it's so awkward. What do you do with yourself? <laughs> so funny. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, perfect. Yeah, we're getting some good, uh, yeah, thank you, Charity. back in here Welcome. in the chat room. Um, well, I know we're coming up on five o'clock. Okay. So, um, can I close uh, out? Yeah, I think it'll be a good time to close so, out. I just want to say thank you guys for uh, allowing the opportunity for me to share with you guys today. And I hope that each of you are leaving with some new ideas and that you are excited about networking. Uh, I invite you to reach out to me if you have any additional questions uh, or if you'd like to talk more. And I hope that someday I see you again in the future. And that's it for me. I'll stop sharing, Alex. Well, perfect. Well, thanks again, all of you for joining. Thank you so much, Charity and, um, and the BNI team uh, for your support and for being here as well, too. And this is a real important topic for all of you, especially that are, that are new to the business world and, and as uh, entrepreneurs. So um, I hope you got a lot out of this. We'll um, make sure to get this recording out to all of you as well, too. And thank you so much for attending. We'll see you all next time. Thank you, BNI. So copy and I. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Alex. Thank Thanks, you Christine.